So this could be some exciting news for you guys. Uh, I know I'm excited. So Photodeox has a product called the ND Throttle, and it's used to adapt, um, say, Canon lenses to a full-frame Sony camera like the A7S II or A7R II. Uh, cameras that, because they're full-frame, you're not really going to use a speed booster. You're just going to use a um, adapter. Now, if you're working with Canon EF lenses, like I have some in the back there, um, typically you're going to get something like a Metabones or similar product where you know there's no optical uh, glass here but it does communicate with the Canon lens so that you can change your aperture from the um, camera and it still supports things like autofocus and stuff. Well Photodeox's ND throttle is a variable ND filter within the lens adapter so it's much different than what you're going to get out of the Metabones um, and this time with the new fusion adapter it now can communicate with the lens to the camera body. Previously they had an ND throttle that was a variable ND filter um, but you lost communication to the Canon EF lens that you were mounting but now it actually communicates so you could see some of the contacts that are back here and in the front so you can change your settings just like the Metabones your aperture and uh, autofocus and stuff like that. So on the outside here you have a geared ring and this is how you would dial your variable ND filter. So you would just turn this and you notice that on the inside it is getting darker and darker. And then we would open it back up. Now this is great. This is, you know, this is huge. A lot of cameras like these small camera bodies don't have built-in ND filters. So you're always working with some sort of ND filter which I just did a video on with my Ursa. Um, so ND filters are a big thing for me. Uh, here we have a 24105, which has a 77 millimeter filter. And then you have the 100 macro, one of my favorites, but it has a 67 millimeter filter. We've got Tokina's new 11 to 20, uh, and that one's an 82 millimeter filter. And then here is an example where we have a wide angle lens uh, that you can't add a front filter to. So you, if you wanna put an ND here, it's very smart to get a lens adapter that has the ND behind the lens because you could still apply an ND filter to all of these lenses without using different filters, step up rings, adapters, or anything like that. Uh, you can mount all these lenses um, very quickly and they all have an ND behind the lens. It's actually beneficial to have an ND behind the lens too because for some wide angles, uh, ND filters um, like variable ND filters could cause some problems like on this Tokina 11 to 20 we'd probably end up seeing some sort of X cross pattern but uh, if it's behind the lens you don't see that. Um, there's also uh, it's also said that if the filter is behind the lens it may be sharper than by putting it in front of the lens especially if you're using longer focal lengths um, so that could be beneficial as well. Um, anyways it's not a complete replacement because sometimes you don't need this ND filter when you're working like indoors but it's great to have the option because uh, you know if I'm doing an entire session outdoors on a bright day or where I know I have a lot of light, I prefer to have ND filters so I could use the shallow depth of field and then use S-Log on these cameras which have a really high base ISO. So you are you end up using ND filters all the time in S-Log. So here we have it already built into the camera and then we could just adapt any of our lenses. Um, and we can use manual lenses, no problem. And we can also use Canon EF lenses and change the iris and aperture in, in all of these. So really handy to have that. So anyways, let's mount this here. You'll notice it's a physically different size and shape than the Metabones. So if you're using a proprietary cage that has Metabone support, um, this is going to be a different fit. But it does have its own tripod foot. So if you're putting a 7200 lens on here, um, you can mount it to this lens adapter so that your camera is not carrying all the weight through the adapter. So you could just mount it right here. Now, if you don't want to use this foot, you can actually take it off. So I'll take this foot off here. And now you can actually mount your QR plate directly to your camera body. And as you can see, it still sits over the QR plate. So this lens adapter has support even uh, if you're not mounting directly to this adapter. So if we were to tighten this up here, our QR plate 
sits fairly flush on the bottom of our lens up to the front. So you can use it without the uh, tripod foot if you don't need it. Um, so taking a look here, if we were to mount, say, our Tokina 11 to 20, let's turn this on. And then we're at 2.8 right now. And if I just turn the dial here, you can see that we are controlling the aperture on this Canon EF lens. And if I found that it was just too bright, instead of uh, stopping down because I want to keep my shallow depth of field, I can just turn the ND throttle here on the lens adapter. And you see we have a variable ND here without having to worry about ND filter sizes, step up rings or anything like that. And then if we wanted to take this off, and again, we're gonna throw a uh, ultra wide 14 millimeter here. Now this is a manual lens. So we're really not taking advantage of the, um, you know, being able to adjust the, the aperture on a Canon EF lens. But if you were using something like Canon's new uh, 11 to 24, or any of those ultra wide angles, the eight to 15 fisheye, where you can't put a filter on the front. This is a great solution right here. Because a, a lot of guys wanna run with the ultra wides, but they still need that ND filter. So here you have a variable ND behind an ultra wide angle lens where you can't physically put a front filter. So here we could adjust the ND and stop it down without changing our f-stop. So here you can see we don't have a lens, but we could still stop down our image. All right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what uh, the new Photo Deox Fusion adapter can do. You can adapt your Canon EF autofocus lenses, full control of your aperture through the camera body. So you got all that communication, your focus confirmation, um, but you have a variable ND filter behind the, the lens which is like you know I don't it's a time saver it's huge because you don't have to carry a 77 a 67 a 82 or a matte box uh, it, everything's just here and you got you don't lose control over your aperture um, and if you want to use manual lenses you could still use manual lenses on here again you can mount your tripod plate directly um, it gets support under the lens adapter no problem there but if you wanted to mount your plate to the lens adapter itself, you know, it comes with this foot. So we'll run a quick test here. We have the Metabones with the Canon 2470 on the Sony a7S II. And we're in the S-Log profile, um, which we shoot with a lot. Now, as you can see, the image here looks really blown out, super blown out. Typically when you're doing video, you want your shutter speed to be at 1 50th if you're shooting at 24 frames or your shutter speed is basically double what your frame rate is. Um, and then here we have 2.8 because we want that shallow depth of field. Uh, but the base ISO for S-Log is 1600 here. You notice we can't change to anything lower. That is the base ISO. Now on the A7S, that's 3200. So it's a little bit more complicated to shoot when it's bright outside. So really the only obvious thing we could do here to get our exposure right is to change our aperture value. So we're going to have to crank this guy down all the way to, you know, like an F8, maybe F, eh, maybe F, maybe more than that if we want to keep our highlights. So we'd probably be at F10, which is again where you start to lose your shallow depth of field. If we want to maintain that look, we're going to have to place an ND filter onto this camera. Um, now adding an ND filter to the front of the lens, you know, it's no big deal, but when you start to manage several different lenses, several different filter sizes, uh, it gets a little bit cumbersome. And, you know, you also want to have a variable ND because, um, you know, that's a little more handy than a static because you're able to dial in the correct exposure you want. So anyways, I'm gonna shoot a little bit of video um, on here at F10. Let's see if we can get this in focus. 
So we'll shoot some video here at f10 and then I'll show you that sample just so we can compare it to the photo deox to see if there's any loss in sharpness or in, uh, in color. So we're just going to shoot this for a second and then we'll put on the photo deox filter next. All right, so here's the same test, same lens, um, same shutter speed, uh, our base ISO, again, 1600, because we can't change that, we can't go any lower than that. And here we're at F2.8. Now, in the previous video, I had to actually set the exposure to, uh, or the aperture to F16, if I didn't want to blow out any of the highlights. Um, so we're at F16, which again, we lose all of our shallow depth of field. Um, and now we have the exact same setup, except we have a variable ND here, and that's placed behind the lens, uh, which again is beneficial when you're swapping different lenses and different filter sizes. So you don't have to manage any of that. You really just swap the lens and you're ready to go. Again, we have full communication if we want to change the aperture with the photo deox. Um, but we're gonna leave it at 2.8 so we could get the, uh, you know, the best shallow depth of field we can. And then we're going to just adjust our exposure using the ND filter. So we don't have to change our shutter, we don't have to change our ISO, we don't have to change our aperture. We just dial in the ND until we get rid of some of these um, blown highlights. And let me record some of this footage here. And we'll be able to compare that and just kind of see if we're really losing a lot of sharpness or if there's a color shift but we're definitely gaining uh, a lot more shallow depth of field than we can without an ND filter. Anyways, I'm gonna have a link to this product um, below this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, you could leave that here in the video and also on the blog, cheesycam.com.